Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Martin um, and I've come on today um, because I wanted to kind of give you an update on what's been going on and you know what you know what decks I've been using uh, the most recent and I thought I'd come on and have a bit of a chat today. Um, I've seen some videos online as well you know about um, consumerism um, which I think makes us all think um, but I'm gonna leave that for another video I don't want to get into that today so uh, a little bit of a backstory about today um, a few weeks ago um, somebody I know was downsizing the tarot collection and they were getting rid of the Mysteries of Mary Tarot deck and the Mysteries of the Black Madonna Tarot deck. And so um, I purchased the two decks um, and honestly uh, they are probably the best two decks that I have ever purchased and I mean that. Um, so a little bit of a backstory before I start rambling on about the decks. Um, I had, uh, when I was very, very small, I used to stay at my grandparents' house. Um, and I didn't really like to be separated from my mum and dad. And, and even though I love my grandparents dearly, you know, when you're young, you don't like that separation part. And so when I used to stay in, in, I think it was my mum's old room, actually, at my nan's house, um, my nan had a, an unused fireplace, um, with, like a screen in front of it and these screens normally had a tapestry in or something they had little feet on the bottom in with a frame and the glass um and that was put in front of the fireplaces as decorations if that wasn't used and my nan had um a picture of the virgin mary in her fireplace um and also a statue by the side of it and i don't honestly know why because my nan wasn't religious um you know, so she just had it there for decoration. And then my nan used to say to me, before I went to sleep of a night, if you feel scared, look at the photo and know picture and know that Mother Mary is looking out for you. And she's going to keep you safe. And so that was possibly my first experience I kind of had um, with any kind of like, you know, um, icon of Mary. Um, because my, my parents wasn't religious either. I mean, I went to Sunday school like lots of us did, um, but I didn't particularly enjoy it. So I've never, you know, followed a mainstream uh, religion or anything. I've just kind of done my own thing along the way. Um, loosely followed a pagan path. Um, and it wasn't until I got older, until I started to get interested in, in you know, Mary and, you know, different things. And so I've always wanted this deck uh, since it came out a few years ago. Um, but I know that it's expensive. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, it's one of the most expensive decks on the market. Well, you know, what we've got to realise is, you know, some creators are artists and this is their full time job. And this is their only sole income they have got coming in. There's a difference to me um, with putting your heart and soul into something and your whole life into something, creating it over a couple of years, than it is actually sitting down with an iPad on Procreate, doing something for RB, and then banging it on Kickstarter and making money. I'm not saying, you know, anything about anybody who does that. I'm just giving this as an example, um, because obviously Hetian's work reflects in the price of a deck. Um, so I just wanted to say that, you know, um, because Hetienne visited... Um, you know, pil places of pilgrimages or, you know, um, where uh, apparitions of the Mother Mary has been seen. Um, every single card is a piece, you know, a work of art in its own right. Um, because Etienne actually made the shrines and then took photos of the shrines for the tarot cards. And to actually put the Mysteries of Mary and... The Mysteries of the Black Madonna into two separate tarot decks is a feat and a half. Um, you know, because to kind of like tie the two together, um, it must have been incredibly time consuming. And I really haven't had a deck, as I said, like this before. It's absolutely phenomenal. It has um made me see different things differently. I've been using it for two weeks, I've been using it for um well, I never do divination really. Um, 
I've been reading, obviously, the guidebooks, which are absolutely phenomenal too. And I've been reading, uh, learning so much about um, the Mysteries of Mary, you know, from, you know, the biblical aspects and uh, the Gnostic religions, you know, belief systems, the Cathars, you know, the pagans, ancient Egypt, everywhere in the world. And, and it has been an incredible journey. So much so that I'm actually going um, on a pilgrimage with my friend Moran from Starseed Tarot next year to France. Um, and I've never done anything like this before and I've never wanted to do anything like this before. Um, this is, wasn't until I started to use the decks. And so I wanted to obviously show you, you know, some of the cards. You've probably seen it before, but, like, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of a refresher. Um, I suppose there's like loads of walkthroughs of these on... on um, youtube so first of all i'm going to start with the mysteries of mary um, and not in order because i'm using them all the time and so as you can see every single card is a shrine to mary um you know the suits have been changed to kind of like um you know go with mary's teachings and you know mary's life and all the different aspects of her you know all throughout the world and everything um so like i mean what i'm doing is um i want to tell you like kind of like how i use the deck um how i use the deck in my own practice i mean i've actually set up um like kind of a marion altar now and so like everything's like kind of set up for me to go um and I come here every morning to like kind of pray and meditate um, and, you know, process things um, after I've chosen a card. So, for instance, like say um, I would put that um, on my card stand and I'd kind of reflect on the images, um, you know, to see if I can get anything from the images. And then like the guidebook as well. I mean, this guidebook, um, along with the other one, is absolutely incredible you know there's so much like to learn you know it's not one of those books you can just read in one sitting um and just like you know think oh okay then i know all that now um you don't because you've got all the suit of vessel vessels here for instance uh is mary in the archetype of virgin mother prophetess and priestess of the mysteries so you've got the woman as a vessel of the divine feminine the Annunciation of Mary, three daughters of Anna, Mary as priestess in the temple of the Dorb, Sarah Akali, and everything there. And then you've got the suit of Holy Rood, Mary in the archetype of bride and bride chamber. So it goes all the way through there. And then mine, this card, you've got this stuff there. And you've got like the Rosa Mystica, the Annunciation of Anna, um, Ariadne and the Red Clue. Um everything everything you can think of um and then the suit of roses you've got the cosmic mary the cosmic rose um priestess or in the miriam tradition and this one is mary salvatrix um which is the four of roses so for instance um i would go to the page uh where it has got the four of roses i uh, want to three four and so there is like kind of like a little quote at the top um which Hetienne has used in her work and then it she says um this shrine celebrates the birth of the miraculous medal also known as the medal of the immaculate conception and then you've got like you know all the history behind it all um and then you've got like a little kind of paragraph. The four of roses indicate a time of good fortune, happiness and stability. However, this archetype also has a tendency to hold on too tightly to earthy fortune or constructs. Well, you know for a start that this means um, this is related to pentacles in the normal tarot card, tarot deck. And so what I would do, I'll kind of meditate with this and the meaning behind, you know, what Etienne has actually included in the guidebook and I'll try to apply it to my day and, I'm, and what I'm doing every morning now is I'm giving myself 30 minutes um, to kind of like just sit and you know look at the imagery in the card and you know see what I can kind of get from it and actually sit down and try to apply it to my life for once um, because this isn't one of those decks you can just pick up and just leave alone 
Um, I have always been very, very thirsty for knowledge. And when something incredibly special like this does come along, you really want to know the ins and outs of it. You know why um, Hetien chose that particular story for the card. And everything is included in the guidebook. And the cards are absolutely gorgeous. And you do not, well, let me just get one thing uh, clear. Um, you do not have to be a religious person to use this deck um, because it touches on all kinds of cultures, different belief systems. And so you'd be surprised how Mary has been woven into mythology, history, cultures um, for a millennium and more. Um, and this is what I'm finding most fascinating about the deck. Um, what I've noticed as well is because they are kind of photos of an actual structure, um, they do look kind of 3D. So it's like having your own personal little shrine, you know, in front of you when you do, uh, you know, pull a card. And there's fairy tales as well, like kind of like intermingled um, throughout the deck. You know, you've got Little Red Riding Hood, Mother Goose, lots and lots of fairy tales from all sorts of different cultures. And this is why I think it's so appealing. Um, because I did think before, you know, when somebody told me, I can't remember who told me when this deck was first out. And I thought, you know what, I'm a deck about Mother Mary. I don't know, it's going to be a little bit too religious for me. And... But like when I saw out the people was using it, especially Kasha from Tarot Map, um, I realised how incredibly special it was. And so I just wanted to come on today to kind of like, you know, share the beautiful artwork and all the hard work that um, Hetien has put into this deck. Um, and as I said, I have never seen a deck like it ever before. And so it is incredibly special. So this one is based on the life and the mythology and the history and everything of Mother Mary and a different aspect and the Virgin Mary. Um, and the other one, which I'll show you in a moment, is based on the other aspect of Mary, which is the Black Madonna. Um, I don't know enough yet to kind of sit here and wax lyrical um about the historical content um i'm learning as i go um and i wouldn't want to like kind of like waffle on um without being able to do etienne's work justice so i'm just going to share what i know um in how much comfort um this deck has actually brought into my life since i've been using it over the last two weeks um yes i do different use different decks for instagram um but this one is my own personal deck um i've been reading the guidebook um nightly i've been looking at the cards it's like looking through a picture book um it's just truly amazing so yeah and you know you'd be surprised when you started reading the guidebook you know the amount of like non-religious information is in there you know um and like lots of pagan information as well and to the way that the christians you know placed you know the churches of the sacred sites and and things like that which a lot, a lot of us already know um but when you reread it again you find out you know that they kind of adopted um some of the kind of like pagan uh belief systems and um yeah, it's kind of sad, really, um, because this deck is, you know, Divine Feminine. Um, it's very female. And it, it just, yeah, I just can't shut up about it, you know. So <laughs> let me just stay quiet for a minute. So another thing I wanted to say is a huge thank you to FDM because when I started posting with the deck, um, we actually exchanged a few messages. And she sent me um, some lovely gifts through the post. Um I have got um, a black and a white Virgin Mary there and a couple of bags. And she also sent me um, some rosaries as well. So thank you so much to Hetienne. Um, You know, I'm truly grateful. Um, it really is lovely. So on to the next deck now. Um, 
And this is oh, the guidebook she sent me as well because I haven't got a hard copy of the guidebook for the, the, the Black Madonna. So this is kind of like, obviously follows the, you know, the same format. Um, but this this is like um, obviously all based on the Black Madonna. You know, you've got the sorrowful mother in here and everything. Um, and it's just this one. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's kind of blew my mind. Um, so you've got Sacred Altars of the Black Madonna Tarot deck. And, you know, Hetien says each card in both mystery decks is initiation. Initiation into the hidden and sacred garden of Mary as goddess, as mother of life and death, queen of heaven and queen of the underworld, and mother of loss and resurrection. Each card is a sacred altar and a sacred shrine, a shrine to divine archetype that is alive and potent within each one of us and within our world and in the sacred womb. When you work consciously with the deck, each card as is an initiation, one that you can step through into its realm and whose secrets will become known to you. The Black Madonna is an artistic expression of beauty, truth, wisdom and justice. She is a message and a messenger from the spiritual world. Um, so this is basically uh, telling you like everything about the Black Madonna, um, you know, from the history, her blackness, the sacred landscape. Um, so it's just absolutely jam-packed full of information. Um, and yeah as i said you know it's not one of those books you can just flick through and then we have a history of like Hetienne's journey as well and in the back of this one i think it's in the back of this one as well um there's a further reading list a bibliography in there um in that one but in this one there's actually prayers uh you can use Prayer to the Black Madonna, Hail Holy Queen, a closing prayer, Ashes at the Feet of Kali, um, and then meditation as well. So this kind of follows like on from the first one, um, but obviously they're all different kind of like stories in here as well. Um, these are, you know, from all over the world, you know, different kind of places and sacred sites, and there's prayers. In, in here as well um you know there's mentions of glastonbury in the uk um and it is totally totally gorgeous so let me show you the cards from the the black madonna one this is the most recent one um Hetien is going to be stocking both of the decks again in the shop i think it's june or july um i will put the link underneath anyway right so you can see these are just as beautiful as um the uh mary ones um but there's something incredibly deep um kind of esoteric and special about this deck and you know i'm kind of like working with this alongside the 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 mother mary one um but i need to kind of like you know find out more um before i start working with it properly and as in the first one there is a shrine um and a portal you know to kind of like the mysteries so you can meditate on the shrine as well you've got sacred hag of the black veil there um and so you've got i think that's isis um and yeah it's just would no words needed sometimes it's you know with some artwork and you know you can just see for yourself how beautiful um the cards really are and you've got black veil there and living stone and to find out the history of the black madonna which i've been reading off i've actually bought a separate guidebook um um by an italian lady and so i've been reading that alongside as well and it's absolutely fascinating you know to find out that she was hidden in mountains and caves um and you know the, the the story the backstory um and the historical context is a context is absolutely mind-blowing so the bride i've actually been working with that card um because hetien gives like a, a meditation um for this card and before i've actually gone to bed of a night i've been doing this meditation um and it's absolutely amazing 
and this bride is uh, similar to the High Priestess um, in the Tarot deck and yeah the meditation is absolutely phenomenal really and um, so we have like you know different kind of like there's dolls posed there's um icons posed and there's everything you know all the work that's gone into everything it's completely mind-blowing really and so i'm not gonna like single one out to say i've got a favorite because i you know i, I love them both equally and I suppose if you wanted to kind of like, you know, use the two decks together, um, you, of course you could. Um, you know, a lot. Of, I know a lot of people are kind of like hung up at the moment on things like shadow work and things like that. So you could mainly, you know, possibly use like the Black Madonna as a shadow work deck and use this one as a general deck. I don't know, but like, I mean, I'm just going to be using them both equally anyway. Um, this kind of like delves deeper though into like kind of different things. And so, you know, because of the whole mystery surrounding the Black Madonna, it kind of makes sense um, the way that the guidebooks are written. And it's uh, yeah i'm just like looking at the cards now and i'm thinking well i didn't see that before like that you know that skeletal face there in the black file um i didn't see that before and so like there's always something you've kind of missed in these decks and so yeah so i just wanted to hop on today and you know and give you a little bit of a life update um you know i finished all my therapy and i'm kind of in a better place um than I was four months ago and so yeah I'm kind of like happy and you know and doing my own thing and you know taking less notice of what's going on externally that was obviously affecting me internally so yeah it's just nice to kind of like get back to normal again and you know be able to kind of have some control over my life and what's going on and yeah and this is, as I said, like I've been using these decks now exclusively morning and night time for the last two weeks. And I shall continue to do so. When I go on my pilgrimage next year, I shall be taking both decks with me. Um, and yeah, I just I just want to take them everywhere with me now. And, I, you know, it's just one of these cards you feel, you can always feel like propping up as a little altar somewhere with a little candle in front of it, a little tea light in front of it. And, you know, I'm kind of meditating or, or praying, whatever you want to do. But, yeah, I thought I'd, like, come on and, and you know, show you. And, you know, I'm kind of lost for words when I say, like, things like this, you know, the true beauty of somebody's work. And Etienne is also an incredibly lovely special person as well so i just wanted to say that and yeah so you know i mean some people have said to me like you know i can't wait to see you do a walkthrough of that and i'm gonna come back i'm gonna come back say maybe may june um when i've got to know this deck a little better and some of the mysteries a little better and tell you how like these kind of mysteries do kind of like relate to our lives now um, and what we can learn, you know, from the messages that are in the cards. So I just want to say a huge thank you, you know, to everybody, you know, Hetien, obviously, um, and other people who continuously support me in the community. Um, it's just a lovely place to be at the moment. And I will be on later with Levi and Danny on my channel um just to do a lovely little live and a chat and a laugh so hopefully see you all guys soon um and as i always say i'm working my way through the comments um as best i can so thank you so much uh for watching this has been a truly special experience um sharing something as incredible as this so Thank you for watching guys, I love you all and I will speak to you all soon and I will be back again. See you guys, bye, take care.